LCTV Sports presents Madomic Valley High School Basketball. Special thanks to tonight's game sponsors. Bangor Savings Bank has been investing in the communities in which we work and live since 1852. Supporting our neighbors through corporate funding, grant making, volunteerism, and creative community partnerships is one of our core values. Bangor Savings would like to wish the student athletes from Madomic Valley good luck in the upcoming season. Good luck, Panthers. Midcoast Athletic Center on Route 1, the Atlantic Highway in Warren, would like to wish the Panthers of Madomic Valley good luck in the upcoming season. Go Panthers! RZR Hardware on Atlantic Highway, Route 1 in Waldeboro, would like to wish the Panthers good luck in the upcoming season. RZR Hardware, where Ace is the place for all your hardware, lumber, and feeds. Good luck, Panthers! Shelley's Flowers would like to wish all the student athletes good luck this season. Shelley's Flowers supporting Madomic Valley students, from prom flowers to tuxedos. Go Panthers! Lincoln's Country Store, Route 90 in Warren, featuring fresh meats, produce, groceries, and all your shopping needs, would like to extend best wishes to the Madomic Valley student athletes. Good luck, Panthers! It is our goal at Madomic Veterinary Services to provide your pet with the best care possible. Animals are our life and our livelihood. Our medical services included wellness pet care for all life stages from your very first puppy or kitten. Madomic Veterinary Services congratulate the student athletes from Madomic Valley and wish them luck this high school basketball season. Maple Lane Builders, 84 Maple Lane in Jefferson, for renovations, additions, or new construction projects, look no further than the professionals at Maple Lane Builders. Good luck, Panthers! Personal banking at First National Bank is a one-of-a-kind experience because we believe in you and all that you accomplish. Our business banking products are committed to serving your needs. At First National Bank, we're working hard for you. Good luck! to the Panthers of Madomic Valley in this high school season. France Furniture and Bedding has furniture for every room in colors that are inspired by the sea. Our store on Route 90 in Warren, Maine offers living room, bedroom, dining room furniture and mattresses from the best brands. Creating the perfect living room or personalizing your bedrooms is what we at France Furniture and Bedding love to do. France Furniture and Bedding, supporting Madomic Valley athletes. Good luck, Panthers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Panther Dome. Larry Seidlinger for LCTV Sports, along with my right-hand lady, Miss Maya Zeeworth from the Lincoln County News. Tonight, the Belfast Lions have invaded the Panther Dome as they take on the 3-3 three three Madomic Valley Panthers. We had a pretty good uh, freshman and JV games before here tonight. Uh, hopefully the Panthers will come out on top and make it a three-peat. Indeed, and they they need it, really. They uh, they dropped the last two, I believe, so it would be exciting to get a victory tonight. Yeah, Madonna, they had a great game over Camden, and they, yes. they, they came out the other night against Morse and, and ran out a nice lead, and then just fell flat in that second half. I, I really don't know what happened. Well, I'm sure Coach Patsy was asking himself the same thing. Well, it seems like they have the whole team back. There were some players missing at the last home game, so this is encouraging. I'm excited to see what they do here tonight. So we've got a couple of minutes here left to go. Let's hear from our sponsors to keep this thing all together. Bangor Savings Bank has been investing in the communities in which we work and live since 1852. Supporting our neighbors through corporate funding, Grant making, volunteerism, and creative community partnerships is one of our core values. Bangor Savings would like to wish the student athletes from Madomic Valley good luck in the upcoming season. Good luck, Panthers. Midcoast Athletic Center on Route 1, the Atlantic Highway in Warren, would like to wish the Panthers of Madomic Valley good luck in the upcoming season. Go Panthers! RZR Hardware on Atlantic Highway, Route 1 in Waldeboro, would like to wish the Panthers good luck in the upcoming season. RZR Hardware, where Ace is the place for all your hardware, lumber, and feeds. Good luck, Panthers. Shelley's Flowers would like to wish all the student athletes good luck this season. 
Shelley's Flowers supporting Madomic Valley students. From prom flowers to tuxedos. Go Panthers! Lincoln's Country Store, Route 90 in Warren, featuring fresh meats, produce, groceries, and all your shopping needs, would like to extend best wishes to the Madomic Valley student athletes. Good luck, Panthers! It is our goal at Madomic Veterinary Services to provide your pet with the best care possible. Animals are our life and our livelihood. Our medical services included wellness pet care for all life stages, from your very first puppy or kitten. Madomic Veterinary Services congratulate the student athletes from Madomic Valley and wish them luck this high school basketball season. Maple Lane Builders, 84 Maple Lane in Jefferson. For renovations, additions, or new construction projects, look no further than the professionals at Maple Lane Builders. Good luck, Panthers! Personal banking at First National Bank is a one-of-a-kind experience because we believe in you and all that you accomplish. Our business banking products are committed to serving your needs. At First National Bank, we're working hard for you. Good luck to the Panthers of Madomic Valley in this high school season. France Furniture and Bedding has furniture for every room in colors that are inspired by the sea. Our store on Route 90 in Warren, Maine, offers living room, bedroom, dining room furniture, and mattresses from the best brands. Creating the perfect living room or personalizing your bedrooms is what we at France Furniture and Bedding love to do. France Furniture and Bedding, supporting Madomic Valley athletes. Good luck, Panthers! Okay, we're back at the Panther Dome here. LCTV Sports bringing you tonight's ball game. Larry Seidling along with Maya Ziegler from the Lincoln County News. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, Maya. Hey, did you miss me on uh, last Tuesday? I did. I was a lone <laughs> soldier over here. <laughs> and my lovely daughter sat here and watched the game and said after the game, if you ever need anybody to sit in with you, Dad, I'll help you. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you're only an hour and a half late, girl. Yeah, like, you saw me flounder. I mean, she here. did the book for me all through high school. And well, and stuff. Uh, yeah. But hey, that's good job security for me. It is. Just saying. It is. Just saying. As we hear athletic director Matt Lash doing some preliminary introductions, three and three pants is taking off the Lions. Did you get that record, Maya? Let me see if I can track All that right. down. Track real that quick. down. That's a good reporter that you are. Yes. We'll be on again Thursday night as the Panthers take on the Cross County High Tribal League Academy Eagles. Yes. The Eagles on the rebound. They picked up a win here the other night against Gardner. And they played much better this season. Young team still. Um, Coach Ryan Ball will be bringing his young Eagle Tough into the Panther Dome. See, It'll be a good test for the Eagles. Oh, yeah. What's exciting for me is that. I have the Lincoln Academy Student Newspaper Club on Thursday, and I'll be back over here to watch the two teams battle okay. it out. So, Sounds good. All righty. From the looks of it, I believe that Belfast is 1-6 this season. Okay, they put it down here. Let's see. They picked up a win against Waterville. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Coach Tepatsy is looking for some of that senior leadership to uh, – Rise to the top. He's got three or four seniors there. They've been on this team now for three years, and when they come together and get that that senior leadership down, they're going to be tough to contend with. Oh, absolutely. You know, I talked to Coach Patsy earlier this season, and he was saying that you know, it all depends. They would go as far as the seniors took them, and so far that's been that's been pretty much the case. Yeah, it's uh, it's that calm confidence you want on the court, and uh, like you have said before, Patrick, Jake, and Trevor have been playing varsity together all four years, so you see it come out. And we've got just about a couple of minutes left to go here for the start of the ball game. Belfast Lions up the coast just a ways in okay. town tonight. I have. And the girls are over, over up there, and I got a halftime score of 28 to six. 
Olympics with the Panthers up. But that was a good amount of time ago, so we'll see. And the girls played very, very well. Yes. They've only drawn one game. To and Ocean's five and one. Side. And that was the first game of the season, so I am excited to see that rematch. And it'll be right here. It'll be right here. And Oceanside is probably in a class by itself in the oh, state. absolutely. But I think the Panthers will give them a good run. For sure. They they have a lot of talent over there at Rockland. Two of probably two of the best players in the state uh, on the same team. So always keeps your leg up. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to have your coach? Certainly one of the best big girls, the young green girl there. She's only a freshman, 6'3". Oh, wow. I can't wait to see her play over here. Yowza. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that game. I'm looking forward to the the Camden uh, Madomic boys Camden game. Camden Madomic boys over here will be top. Mount Mount View down here will be. I mean, Mount View beat the boys up there. Uh, yeah. If they didn't play well, they know they didn't play well. I, I think they feel they can beat them. Uh, so that will be an interesting ball game. Absolutely. Just a whole lot of good stuff on the roster still. Yeah. Even though, you know, it's 2022, and, halfway through the season. And cold. And cold. Yeah, the snowstorm on its way. Ugh. Well, at least we don't have a game on Friday. We don't have a game on Friday. Tomorrow afternoon, for you that would like to turn in, we've got the Madomic Middle School, the Raven Hawks. River Hawks. River Hawks, excuse me. Yes. River Hawks uh, at 345. Girls, and then I think is the girl, both games with girls or girls and then boys? I can't remember. Ooh, that is an excellent But I'll question. be there. We'll, You'll be there. We'll be live streaming it. Excellent. And we'll be back here at the Panthers on Thursday, and then we'll be back in here on Saturday noontime. Oh, you're going to get sick of me, man. <laughs> Recently, the Norman Valley High School and its communities lost two very devoted and respected former staff members with the passing of Doug Libby and Lois Brown. Sakes. Ms. Olivia was a physical education teacher and coach at the Dominic Valley from 1968 until his retirement in 2003. He also served as the school's athletic director from 1980 to 2003. Ms. Olivia built one of the state's most respected and successful wrestling programs with the 1991 team winning the Class B state championship. Doug Libby was committed to the values and ideals that athletics offers our student athletes and worked tirelessly to provide the best opportunities for each of them. Mrs. Gravelin, mother of former NBA chess coaches Jim and Scott Gravelin, began working at Walter High School and continued her career at Donna Valley when the school opened in 1968. She worked in both the guidance and main offices at Mrs. Gravelin was a very dedicated supporter of the athletic program before, during, and after her time in RSU Board. Would you please stand and join me in a moment of silence as we honor the lives and the service of Dr. Lee and Lois Gravelin. Good evening and welcome to the Dominic Valley High School for tonight's KBAC Class B matchup between the visiting Lions of Belfast Area High School and your Dominic Valley Panthers. The administrators of the Dominic Valley Athletic Conference are committed to the promotion of good sportsmanship. We ask that everyone in attendance tonight do the same. Do not behave in a manner that draws the attention away from the athletes. We encourage everyone here tonight to cheer loudly and positively for your team. Represent your communities and schools well. To honor America and all veterans, would you please rise? And gentlemen requested to remove their hats for the playing of the national anthem.
And now for tonight's starting lineup, starts for the Busy Lions, coached by C.D. Harris. Number 10, K.J. Hastings. Number 11, Drew Adelaide. Number 3, Keegan McGowan. Number 43, Rico Washington. And number 24, James Ritter. both teams as coaches give them their last uh, couple of minutes, a couple of seconds of instructions. Pep talks. Pep talks, as Maya says. It's the Iowa positivity. <laughs> so we get a little bit of a mismatch there in center. Jake Craig has got about five inches on that uh, center, fellow jumping center for... Uh, James Ritter. James Ritter for, for the Lions. As the Panthers Woo. control that one, it gets knocked away. Garrett Hutchins starting tonight. I'm trying to figure out who usually starts. Uh, but very excited for Garrett. Uh, star. Star, there it is. Jaden. Coach patsy has been trying out a few different people. Well, I think Jaden was, Jaden may have been on the COVID uh, list. I'm not positive he was, I'm just uh, Oh, now. You oh, like that one. That was questionable. So Jaden may be working his way back into shape here a little bit. Gotcha, gotcha. But defensively, Garrett's going to give you all a, a lot of hustle out there. Indeed. Works very hard. So we got Brown, Bickmore, McKinney, Craig, and Hutchins for the Panthers as the Lions draw first blood. They give us one out of two of McKinney on the dribble quickly into the front court and they got Ooh. Brown with a travel. His feet got started before he put the ball down. So Panthers gonna come out in that full court press. So it's going to be Lion basketball. Panthers not doing a very good job off that defensive glass. They got to get it going here. Early first, just underway here in this ball game. We're out here at Madame Valley, Panther Dome. Well, that was traveled. We didn't let that one go. <laughs> he got that one. Holy There's smokes, I saw that one from up here through a TV monitor. <laughs> McKinney with a drive in the lane, stops, pops, hits the front of the rim, doesn't go. Bickmore, Jake Moore, nice job ripping down the offensive rebound. There's Trevor holding the basketball. He starts to drive in the lane, kicks it outside. Hutchins nails a three. Bam. Hutchins with a three ball deep in the corner. He's 
Panthers looking for that zone press. Trying to make it happen. And the Lions throw up a three ball of their own. We got a ball game. First couple of minutes going, it seems that way. Kenny down to Craig, down low. And that low block kicks back to Bickmore. Bickmore foul line stops, pops, doesn't go. Craig with a rebound and it's batted away. And it would be Panther basketball. See if they run that little uh, alley oop to Oh, it Brown. is your favorite. Nope, they're going to go with Craig. Foul line jumper doesn't go. And there's a rebound. Lions rip it away. And here comes Belfast. With a bomb, doesn't go. Number 10, KJ Payson. And nothing but air, and Vic Moore will put it into McKinney. McKinney with a three ball. He's got it. Belfast making quick work of that press. Well, that's the way you beat a press. Shot, quick passes, diagonals. And we're going to have a travel again. Hey, I think you called it before he did. <laughs> I think so. KJ Payson's going to get called with that one. Uh, Was yep. it? Or so. number 11, sorry. Andrew Avalon? Yep. Hey. I'll buy it. So we got a tie ball game. Early stages, first quarter. McKinney with a drive. Kicks it back out to Craig. Craig looks. Out to Hutchins. Big more to Brown. Brown with a baseline drive. Check that out. McKinney. Hutchins looking. Looking inside. McKinney with a three ball. Wow. Got it. That was a long one, too. And Belfast going to throw it away. There's that full court zone pressure. Bickmore stops, pops. Ooh. He gets his own rebound back, <laughs> banks it in. Sam Jones bank shot. <laughs> you don't remember Sam Jones, Maya, I but I, I do. Great Hall of Fame had just passed here this past week. That was some good, quick thinking, though. Ten-time champion on the Boston Celtics, Ooh. along with Bill Russell. Doesn't go. Bickmore with a rebound. Panthers look to get that running game going. Brown. He's looking inside. Bickmore with a three. He's got it. As the Panthers are lighting it up from outside with four threes in this first quarter. Well, if you can't get your inside game going, your outside <laughs> game is working. And they're going to hit Craig. I think that's his second. That is his second. And going to the line. 24, James Ritter. We got, wow, we got all of the substitutions. We got some wholesale subs coming in. Let's see. We got. You got Finn Pomley, you got Jaden Starr, you got. Blake Morrison Blake and Morris. Corey Donlin. So. Everybody, except for Trevor. Coach to Patsy keeping some fresh legs on the ball on the court. Ooh. And they got Brown with walk. His second. I do have an update on the girls game if you'd like it. Oh, why not? Okay, well, Madomic won 48-14. Oh, that was a seat squirmer, huh? Apparently. Panthers staying in that full court man, and they're going to have Keegan Meagle won for the travel. And then Trevor gets a seat. And Patrick comes back in for him. Blake Morrison throws up three, doesn't go. And he gets he gets called. Oh, 
Oh, right where they want him, right oh, in that corner. Yep. It's gonna let him, they're gonna let him out, let him out. Oh, very nice. Classic sin. Ooh. Wow. As number 11, Andrew Avalon gets the three for the Belfast. We got a barn burner here in this first quarter. 14-12 Panthers, three minutes left. Donlin. And it goes off primarily. Belfast, not having too much problem with that zone press. No, they're moving the ball really well. Doesn't go. Star with the rebound there. Jane doing a nice job. Oof, you could hear that one. Stow with a nice recovery, an errant pass. Donlin doesn't go. And it's going to be off the Donnan. So Brown will be in for Donlin. And Bickmore is in for Parmley. And we have Westley Dyer coming in for Belfast. Belfast quickly in the front court, stops, pops, he's got it. That Number 11, Andrew Abalon. Here come the Panthers. Bickmore stops, pops, got it. Foul line. 16-14, Panthers up two. back and forth this this keeps up we're gonna have a heck of a night here Maya I am excited to see what like end scores we get Patrick with a three ball he's got it his third I think he's three for three too he is <laughs> Travel. It's going to go against Keegan Megawan. What Megawan? I guess that's how you say it. My apologies to Mr. Keegan. Jaden Stein is going to run the point for the Panthers over to McKinney. Looking, over the start, back to McKinney. 50 seconds left, first quarter. See if the Panthers hold the ball for one shot here. It certainly looks like they may. McKinney. Back out, 25 seconds left here. Panthers looking to get a good one. You gotta admire the patience. McKinney with a three ball, doesn't go. With a rebound, Panthers scrambling. Brown, and we're gonna have a whistle at the buzzer, and I think Trevor's gonna get a chance to shoot a pay it. And the foul is on number 24, that's Ritter. His first, Belfast's first. Ooh. And those knees, Trevor, follow through, reach into the hoop. Got me, he heard me. He did. So at the end of one, we got a 2016 barn burner here at the Panther Dome. Oof. Panthers up four.
And that was a that was a three point shooting contest. That from was. Panthers. We got Patrick with nine points, all three. Garrett Hutchins three points, a three, and Jake Bickmore with seven. I think Tra has Trevor has Trevor scored yet. Trevor scored one free throw. Okay, right with no time left. Right. <laughs> he had to get in the first quarter. Yeah, he had to get in the book in the first quarter. LCTV bringing you this high school matchup tonight. Adamic Valley taking on the Belfast Lions from up the coast just away on a very cold winter January night. We'll be back here Thursday night as the Lincoln Academy Eagles come to the dome to see if they can pick up a win. And the Panthers look into, uh, Panthers I think in third place in the heel point system with a three and three record. They had a big win against Campbell with a lot of points. All right, it looks like Belfast has its starters in. And we got McKinney, Starr, Parmley, Bickmore, and Brown in for the Panthers. Pat Dominican that patented man to man. <laughs> Is that patented? That's pretty patented. All right. That's what the Dick Passage teams are noted for. <laughs> oh, nicely done. Both offensively and defensively. No stupid fouls. Pick one to staff. Back to McKinney. McKinney looks. Belfast playing a little 1-3-1. One, one. And Bickmore can't get it to go. Brown with a rebound. He can't get it to go. Star with a rebound. To McKinney. Brown's got it. And he rattled one off the backboard. Finn Pomley playing that center position right now. Very smooth around the rim. We'd like to get him involved in the offense here and see if we can get a few of those off and rebounds put back up. 22-18. Panthers on top, early going. And Staten Style with the rebound. Little McKinney, he wisely pulls it back. It's a baseline drive. He gets it blocked. Ooh, nicely done. Rico Washington. And we're going to have a 30 second timeout. Belfast. 6.08 left to go here in the second quarter. 22 18. And we've been back and forth here, folks. If you're just joining us, Larry Seidlinger along with Maya Zewart from the Lincoln News, LCTV Sports, bringing you this high school basketball. And we'll be back here tomorrow afternoon in the Little Dome down at the middle school as we take do some junior high live streaming. And then Thursday night, we'll have the Eagles from Lincoln Academy taking on the Panthers. Saturday afternoon, the Mount Ararat Eagles come into the dome. The Lady Eagles from Mount Ararat to take on the Lady Panthers. So we got plenty of high school action for you here this week. Keeping me busy too, like yeah. good gracious. Yes. You're gonna get sick of me, I said it before, but you know. You just keep bringing me those snicker bars and you get a shot. Excellent. <laughs> we'll start a tab, it'll be great. That's right. Oh, Corey Donlin's in the game for the Panthers. Stolen away. It's Trevor with the layup. He's got it. He is just so quick. Like that was a that first step. Ball. That first Ooh. step. He's just he's as quick as anybody in the state. Oh, nice. That was number ten, KJ Payson. Baby hook there. Big quarter, McKinney. Panthers looking in. There, he got involved with Finn the offense Pomley for you. At the foul line, nice little turnaround. I've seen him shoot a few hundred of those over to the Mac this summer, over the Midcoast Athletic Center. One of our sponsors for the night's ball game. We thank them. And they're gonna have McKinney with it. With a grab. Grab on the elbow, on the arm. Coach, coach, coach wasn't real pleased, real impressed with that one. 
So Andrew Abalon will put the ball in play for the Belfast Lions. Also, Jacob Craig just came in for uh, Finn Palmer. Wow, that was, that was a very pretty shot. Andrew Abalon. Yeah, as McKinney, that's even a pretty one because that was <laughs> worth three. McKinney nails the three ball. That's his fourth for the night. Because he's feeling it. There's Brown with a rebound. Quickly into the front court. Foul line jumper doesn't go. He gets hit and he's going to go to the line. As the Panthers up 29-22, halfway through the second quarter. At the half, Maya will have all the scoring. Right now, I can tell you it's an easy one. It's three ball <laughs> McKinney. <laughs> <laughs> Bend those knees and reach inside that basket. Don't follow through, Trevor. Come on, buddy. Garrett Hutchins entering. Coach is 10 deep off his bench there. Yeah. There you go. Payson with the dribble for the Lions. Payson with a bomb from way outside. Brown rebounds quickly into the front court. And he's got McKinney. He doesn't get that one. And Hutchins with a reach with a Great rebound, and he ties up number 24, James Ritter. And it's going to be Panther basketball. McKinney oh. will take it out of bounds. Maybe they'll maybe they'll do your favorite. No, I don't think so. Nope. No, they lined up on the wrong side. Patrick baseline to Craig. He puts it up, and he gets hit. Ball fake. Jake, and you'd have had that one, and the foul. Well, he's going to go to the line, see if you pick up a pair the old-fashioned way. Panthers up eight, 30-22, 3.48 left to go in the second quarter. Big Jake Craig, senior at the line. Yes, he got one out of the two. As the Lions rebound. Patient, three-point line, doesn't go. Rebound McKinney, way into the front court. Corey Donlin on the run, takes it in stride and lays it in. And the Lions want a timeout to talk it over as the Panthers have stretched out an 11-point lead. 33-22 here at the Panther Dome. Adamic up 11 because they got that fast breaking gear. Mm -hmm. you, you know, when you're hitting those threes, that just opens up that inside and that you get that running game going, that can be deadly. Indeed, and that has proved to be the case. They've had some key fast breaks here. Excuse Tre me. Trevor was going for the three. <laughs> Belfast with a good rotation. Out to Payson. Craig with a big block. Yeah, travel on Payson. I think that was a makeup call, Michelle. <laughs> we'll take it, because they certainly missed the one on the baseline. 
It all comes back around. We can only hope. So here comes McKinney with a dribble into Brown. Oof. And Craig with a rebound, doesn't go. Battle for it. Here comes Belfast into the front court. Craig with a rebound. Dishes it off McKinney. Far sideline. Patrick looking again. Ooh, doesn't go. Patrick's hungry. And it's going to be a travel. So Bickmore back in the ball game. For Craig is coach to Patsy. Keeping fresh, fresh bodies on the floor. Garrett Hutchins in. Donlin to Hutchins. Hutchins looks. Back out to McKinney. Back to Hutchins. Back to McKinney. McKinney for three. Got it! I love it. <laughs> I love to see that three ball. That's five in this first half for Patrick. And stolen away by Brown. Oh. Belfast gets it back. Oh, yeah, that was a, that's one of those not smart fouls. The difference in this ball game is those five three-pointers right now that Patrick McKinney has. I don't know what the school record for a half is, but... Uh, He's going for it. Yeah. Number three, Keegan McGowan. I thought I saw Brown, you looking for that. Low. You did. The uh, Belfast bench did not agree with that. Number 11, Blake Morrison in the ball game. See if we might run this alley-oop this time. No, nope, uh, no. Nope. McKinney, he's got it! Injury timeout. Oof. Player from Belfast on the floor. This is okay. Payson. I think it was just one of those moments of shock where you need a second. Yeah. Nothing little, wrong with that. Little face plant on the hardwood there. Whew. Wait, it'll wake you up though. Careful, Trevor. He's playing. That was some good defense, though, in the meantime. He earned that one. All right, we got 40 seconds left. I think they're going for one shot. And Brown down low. Nice pass. Good look. That was Hutchins with that nice look down low, cutting Brown. All along the baseline. Patient guided by McKinney. Out top. Go down to seven seconds. Doesn't go. Stolen away by Donnick. So at the end of two. <laughs> We have the Panthers on top, 41-27, led by six three-pointers by Patrick McKinney, and we'll be back.
Bangor Savings Bank has been investing in the communities in which we work and live since 1852. Supporting our neighbors through corporate funding, grant making, volunteerism, and creative community partnerships is one of our core values. Bangor Savings would like to wish the student athletes from Madomac Valley good luck in the upcoming season. Good luck, Panthers. Midcoast Athletic Center on Route 1, the Atlantic Highway in Warren, would like to wish the Panthers of Madomac Valley good luck in the upcoming season. Go Panthers! RZR Hardware on Atlantic Highway, Route 1 in Waldeboro, would like to wish the Panthers good luck in the upcoming season. RZR Hardware, where Ace is the place for all your hardware, lumber, and feeds. Good luck, Panthers! Shelley's Flowers would like to wish all the student athletes good luck this season. Shelley's Flowers supporting Madomic Valley students. From prom flowers to tuxedos. Go Panthers! Lincoln's Country Store, Route 90 in Warren, featuring fresh meats, produce, groceries, and all your shopping needs, would like to extend best wishes to the Madomic Valley student athletes. Good luck, Panthers! It is our goal at Madomic Veterinary Services to provide your pet with the best care possible. Animals are our life and our livelihood. Our medical services included wellness pet care for all life stages, from your very first puppy or kitten. Madomic Veterinary Services congratulate the student athletes from Madomic Valley and wish them luck this high school basketball season. Maple Lane Builders, 84 Maple Lane in Jefferson. For renovations, additions, or new construction projects, look no further than the professionals at Maple Lane Builders. Good luck, Panthers! Personal banking at First National Bank is a one-of-a-kind experience because we believe in you and all that you accomplish. Our business banking products are committed to serving your needs. At First National Bank, we're working hard for you. Good luck! to the Panthers of Madomic Valley in this high school season. France Furniture and Bedding has furniture for every room in colors that are inspired by the sea. Our store on Route 90 in Warren, Maine offers living room, bedroom, dining room furniture and mattresses from the best brands. Creating the perfect living room or personalizing your bedrooms is what we at France Furniture and Bedding love to do. France Furniture and Bedding, supporting Madomic Valley athletes. Good luck, Panthers. Welcome back to the Panther Dome as the Madomic Valley Panthers up 41-27 here in the, we're at halftime. As young Mr. Morrison got a uh, water bottle. I'm not sure which Morrison he was, but maybe a little <laughs> brother. Maya, you got some scores for everybody. We don't already know that Patrick McKenney's been on fire with a, with a, half a dozen threes but, oh yeah but why don't you give us a rundown on the score all right i'm gonna start over with the belfast lions we got andrew avalon with four we have james ritter with six we have keegan mcgowan with eight and we have kj payson with nine over on madomic's side we have jacob craig with one Corey donlin with two garrett hutchins with three finn pomley with two and then our seniors, Jake Bickmore with seven, uh, Trevor Brown with eight, and Patrick McKinney, 18, all three-pointers. All three. No, it couldn't be all three. Yeah, it was all yeah, three. Yeah, it was yeah, all three. It was all three-pointers. Six yeah. times three. <laughs> That's right. You Had to go back to some <laughs> <Yeah>. elementary school <laughs> math there. Oh, dear. Folks, we ask you at home, uh, if you go into any of our sponsors' uh, businesses, please thank them for sponsoring this LCTV production of both here at Madonna Valley as well as over at Lincoln Academy. Uh, it is, means a lot to these young athletes to be able to be seen. We've had great numbers. Uh, I, I, we saw well, over 4,000, I think, huh? in the month of December total views. Wow. It was crazy. Uh, I'm very between glad. Between the two I, schools. Very glad I haven't accidentally sworn <laughs> on any of these. We want to say hello to Boise, Idaho tonight. We want to say hello to Phoenix, Arizona. We, you know, we have some fans watching out there. We want to wish a special young man, my grandson, Mr. Caden Kaur. He is nine years old today. Oh, happy birthday, so Caden. Happy birthday, Caden. And uh, we'll, we'll have a cake the next time we see each other, which we hopefully will be soon. Um, and uh, we thank you all for, for supporting our local uh, high school athletes in this high school basketball season. Thank our sponsors 
that reach into their pockets and help make these broadcasts possible. As we all know, money makes the world go around sometimes. Mm -hmm. They can say what they want about love, but <laughs> but money does a cold, job. Cold, hard cash. The cold, hard cash it does make the world go around. Larry Seidlinger for LCTV Sports along with my Lincoln County News what are you, assistant editor, editor-in-chief, minor, ed little editor? What are Deputy, you, you, editor. Deputy editor. Deputy editor. Maya Zihort. She is also <laughs> our scorekeeper and uh, my uh, snack buddy. She brings me my uh, Snickers bar. Because, you know, you're just not you when you're hungry, Larry. <laughs> That's right. I get a little cranky. <laughs> And, 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 you know, they're off the hot dog. We haven't had, I haven't had a hot dog I in a high know. school game in, like, oh my gosh. God, I don't know. It's been some years. <laughs> like, the other day, I found myself craving concession stand nachos, and it's like, what is the matter with me? <laughs> I'm a grown adult with a kitchen. Yeah, I hear ya. As the Lions have taken the floor to do some warm-ups here. Just a little under four minutes left to go in the halftime. Panthers have put 41 on the board. That's a pretty good first half. Pretty good first half, especially considering, again, just to really stress the point, 18 of those points. Well, they've had some games where they've had some trouble. You know, the Mount yeah. View, they didn't put a lot on the board. Um, you know, they, they just they struggled. They really struggled in the second half against uh, Morse. You know, they put up 36 in the first half and well, 16 or 18 in the second half. It, it just, you know, it was a tough ball game for them. I think they're going to have some good rematches. I think there will be some, like, out to out to prove, out to get some revenge. Yeah. I, I, I really, think it's good drive into the back half of the season. I, I, I do. I, I think you're going to see a real, some real competitive basketball. Camden is certainly not going to be a slouch. Oh, slug. my gosh. Uh, Morse is going to be with a bundle of points over at, uh, over at Bath. Uh, Mount View down here, uh, they're, they're going to be in the running for a tournament berth, so uh, that will be a real competitive game. It's We have a lot of good games left on the schedule. Like I was just talking to John Duke uh, over in Camden, former Newcastle Town manager saying how excited I was for the Camden game here. He said the one up there was indeed a barn burner. Indeed it was. As we had that game, we borrowed it from our folks, our friends over at uh, Main Coast TV, C2C Productions, Charlie, Charlie and Penny Crockett. Did a ball, great ball game over there. Was thankful for them. Indeed. Local access television, man, it is important. It's not just sports, it's also local government. I've had to rely on you guys a couple times to catch up on some municipal meetings I missed. And we've got some fun stuff coming up for this winter that we're, we're looking to do. You know, we've got some shows for Mid Coast uh, Conservancy that we're putting on. Uh, the chamber, we've got some great chamber chats coming up. Uh, I'm gonna wander down the coast and uh, see if I can find some fishermen to talk to. Oh, uh, just don't get lost. No, no. Okay. So it, uh, LCTV is on the move, but we thank our sponsors and all our donors that help make public access, public TV, uh, fun to watch. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, we've got a show coming up next week uh, where Sheriff Todd Brackett has turned to a citizen's advisory group. Oh, and Maya, nice. you and I are going to talk about that off the air. Oh, okay. I look forward to it. So that's something interesting. We just filmed that the other day and did some editing. Tyler, Tyler's... Uh, Back at the studio's got some editing done on it and uh, really looking forward to introducing that to the public. And I cannot believe you have not yet mentioned my favorite LCTV program. What's up? There it is. <laughs> yeah, 3,000 viewers, it's going oh strong. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, anytime you need a co host, you know you can call me. <laughs> we will keep that in mind. All right, we got the starters in for Madomic, just so you're aware. Okay, it's going to be Belfast basketball to start this third period up. Panthers up 41-27. We'll see if they can come out a little stronger than they did against Morse the other night. That's a scramble for the loose ball. Belfast comes away with it. Blocked by Craig. And it's going to go off Payson. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Uh, oh, the, <laughs> the locals are not interested in that. 
We have it on videotape. That we do. <laughs> you need the instant replay ability, Larry. Uh, we have that ability. We just don't have the technical ability. <laughs> we have the, uh, the equipment. We need about another half a dozen sponsors to make that back. Aha, gotcha. Because that requires a tech man as well as a cameraman. Oh. That's the second time we've seen that this winter. So it will be Panther basketball. McKinney, let's see if he's going to pick up where he left off that first half. A drive to the hoop. He's said, I'm tired of shooting from way out here. It takes too much energy. I'm going to take that one to the hoop. He's going to go to the line for pair. This is going to make my math hard because I've been counting <laughs> on him. You've been counting by threes. It adds exactly. Up <laughs> there Matt, it is. Got one. Got them both. He's got an even 20. Panthers standing that man to man. Number three, Keegan McGowan with a three. Patrick stops, pops, doesn't go. Brown came flying in there. Hutchins. Oh, that was Hutchins, excuse me. Yeah. And it's going to be jump ball, but it's going to be Belfast basketball on the possession. So here comes Abaddon. Abaddon, excuse me. And that one didn't go. Big Jake might have something to say about that. McKinney cross court to Hutchins. Out to Bickmore. You heard the contact there. So Trevor will go to the line. Shoot a pair. Bend those knees and reach inside that hoop, Trevor. Put them in there. 43 30. Panthers up 13. 6 16 left to go here, third quarter. That's the first one. Two in a row, all gone. Alfast <laughs> holding the basketball. Panthers manning up. Star coming into the ball game for Garrett Hutchins. Right outside the star. And Lord Bickmore drives baseline, stops, pops, doesn't go. Taken away by patient Belfast. We're slip sliding on the floor today. Ooh, player control foul. <laughs> Haven't seen one of those in the game yet. Yeah, it was a little, little bit of a touchy foul. Maybe it's the makeup for the... It could have been. Referees don't do that. No? So Finn Pomley in the ball game now, Kenny. Coach Nick DePassi keeping the fresh bodies on the floor. Down low to Craig. Craig with a baby jump hook. He's got it. That shot is there for him a lot. When he decides he wants to put that in there, 6'8", there's not going to be too many people that can stop that. And it's going to be off the Panthers. 
So it'll be Lion basketball. Payson will put the ball in play. Panthers up 16, 46-30. Halfway through this fourth, third quarter. Starr with a rebound. Quickly, out front. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. I don't think there was any any doubt in that one. Yeah, that was, that was a foul. It has Brown got run over. <laughs> we haven't seen the alley oop yet tonight. There it is. Oh. oh. Patrick hit the back of the back boy. That was it too. <laughs> It'll come back. Ten second call in the backcourt. And we're going to have a thirty second timeout. Full timeout. A full timeout, okay. I stand corrected once again by the lady to my left. It's why you keep me around. That's right. 4.36 left to go third quarter, 46.30. Panthers up 16. Good mental math there, dude. Well done. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> not bad. LCTV Sports bringing you this high school basketball game. We're halfway through the third quarter out here at the Madonna Valley Panther Dome as the Panthers have opened up a... Margin over the Lions from Belfast. Larry Seidling along with Maya Zewart from uh, Lincoln County News. Maya, have they got any snow out at your parents' place in, in Iowa yet? Not yet from what I've heard. Well, none that's been sticking around. Yeah. Let me rephrase. Well, it doesn't stick around anyway because the wind blows all the time. Over this there. is true, and there are no trees. <laughs> and it there are no trees. That's flat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I got that turn that down. Oof. So it's going to be Lion basketball, I believe. Uh, Panther basketball. Apparently. Apparently. So McKinney will set to run the offense. Adam McKinney. McKinney looks into Brown with a turnaround. Got it. Trevor's starting to come alive. It'll be tough to beat Patrick putting 20 on the board in the first half, and Brown puts another 20 on the board in the second half. It's good of them to share that. I don't know. It appears Jaden got teed up. Coach Pats is not very happy with that one. Mr. Payson make four in a row. He does. Excellent free throw shooting. They're going to have back. Six, this could be a six, six or seven point turnaround. The, uh, they can score off this. Corey Donlin in for the ball game. Bad lessons we learn as young people sometimes. 
And his patient throws up a three, doesn't go. Belfast with the rebound. Don't want to let him back in, Panthers. Don't let him back in. Craig with a rebound. will go the line. Gabe Lash coming in. That's not too bad a trade off. 6'8, six, 6'4. Six, Senior for freshman. Gabe has played well in the underclassmen games. Uh, I was Hamlet. wondering if he was going to get him for that. Got him over the top. That is his first. Baseline drive, guided by Donlin. Corey all over him. And good defense. The young sophomore doing a great job defensively. Pace had nothing, no other choice but to throw it off him. Players going for the ball. His second. Number twenty four, James Ritter. Jump stop. Pace in the foul line. Doesn't go. Kenny will get a seat. And Morrison is in. Well, Brown Warren will run the offense. Drive in the lane. Got it. Trevor coming live here in this third quarter. He's got seven points so far in the third. Steal. Morris to Brown. Because he was sitting on that pass. Donlin picks him clean. His heel take the hoop. Oh, that was Gabe Lash. That was Gabe Lash. That was Gabe Lash. <laughs> Just like that, the Panthers opened up a 21 point lead. Patient doesn't go. Someone got a foul. 
I don't even know who it's on, whether it's on Adamic or it's on Belfast. On Gabe Lash, apparently. Not sure how that all occurred, but. Uh, Neither is coach, apparently. So Payson will put the ball in play for the Lions. And Morrison almost got another one. And he does get another one. And just like that, the Panthers are on the run. Belfast needs a timeout. The Panthers are off to the races here. If you coach the Patsy, you've got to be happy with this unit right here on the floor. Plays some tough defense. Doesn't fall. Morrison can't get it to go. Just like that, the Panthers, after three, have run out to a 59-38 lead over the Belfast Lions. We got one more quarter to go. Don't go away anywhere as the Panthers have finally lit the scoreboard up like you thought they were capable of. Oh, in the absolutely. Uh, Trevor Brown had 11 points in that quarter. And Patrick, to his kindness, scored three uh, free throws. There so you go. my counting by three continues. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. My accounts by threes. <laughs> Hey, I didn't, three dollar bill. I didn't learn those times tables in third grade for nothing. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, Lord. LCTV Sports bringing you this high school matchup between the Madonna Valley Panthers and the Belfast Lions. We're here at, out at Madonna Valley on the Panther Dome. We ask our folks at home to visit any of our sponsors, Shelly's Flowers, RZR Hardware, <laughs> the Meta... Uh, Madomic, I meant Madomic Veterinarian. Uh, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but please, any of our sponsors, go in, tell them thank you. Thank you so much for helping sponsor these high school basketball games. Jake Bickmore back in the ball game. That was a nice transition there. It was with McKinney and Morrison, Parmalee and Lash. There's Lash, back to Parmalee. Kinney, three, doesn't go. Rebound, Morrison. Down to Bickmore. Bickmore puts it up, he's got it. Good teamwork there. All the seniors getting in the action here tonight. I think they got a little something to prove. Goes back to that senior leadership you were talking about. And we have a travel, 24. James Ritter. That third quarter, the Panthers really opened Oof. up, poured on the defense. And the offense. Oh, yeah, it had a lot of transition baskets. Good hustle by uh, Gabe Lash there. Pickmore, they're looking for Lash down low. Pickmore says, I want a three, and he's got one. I haven't seen them shoot the three any better than they've shot it tonight, Maya. Uh, I would absolutely agree with that. They got six, seven, eight, nine, nine threes. Big mode. Nice defensive effort. Doesn't fly. Big more. Oh. Flash can't hang on to it. Good. Too bad, young freshman. That would have been an easy one. Good movement, though. I'm, th I'm thinking a, a two-handed dunk on that one. <laughs> and there's that timeout. The Lions looking to take. As at the Panther Dome here, 6.36 left to go fourth quarter. Panthers up 64-38 as they've stretched this out. And now it's all academic. <laughs> as if I'm right out back, I'm lighting it out. Do you know what I'm talking about, Red Auerbach and the cigar? Do you, did you know? Did you know that story? Yeah, okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to be your basketball history. I'll work on it. See, my basketball history is more Iowa. 
Like, if you're like, hey, what was the record well, of... basketball know? was invented here in the East, Mike. Oh, okay. Yeah. You heard yeah. from Springfield, Illinois? I mean, uh, Springfield, I, uh, Massachusetts? Yes, I'm... Dr. Naismith, you ever hear that guy? I'm familiar. Okay. I'm familiar. Right. Not that I would question you, uh, you know. <laughs> you're a bad guy. I mean... I believe at the last game I was at, you were questioning Iowa's 50-point mercy <laughs> rule. I was. Which, having played on it, or not played, but having gone to a school whose team was on the receiving end of that, <laughs> sometimes it makes the games go faster. So it'll be Lion basketball, fire end line. They're going to go to the length of the floor here. 6.36 to go, fourth quarter. Came out of the gate as a barn burner, but the Panthers tightened up the defensive locks and lit up the scoreboard. Patrick McKinney leading the way. Steal. There's Trevor. And he's got it. He gets out on that break. Ain't nobody catching him. Just a blur right up yep. the court. Pace with a long three. Doesn't go. It's going to go out of bounds off Belfast. So will be Panther basketball. Family in the ball game along with Blake Morrison. Bickmore. He won another one. Oh, nice <laughs> rebound by Morrison. Patrick Kitts looking for that seventh one. Doesn't go. Morrison got the rebound again. Oh, oh what a pass. <laughs> well, that looked the fans up. McKinney to Brown, I believe. Yes, no look, pure trust. I would like to see that on replay again. You turn on tomorrow night, there you can see it. doesn't get it to go, but he's going to get a chance to go to the foul line for a pair. The Panthers starting to really put some distance between themselves and these gritty, gritty Lions from Belfast. Some razzle-dazzle. That last one really brought the crowd alive. 68-40. <laughs> left to go here in the fourth quarter. Garrett Hutchins back in the ball game. And Corey Donlin. Yes. Pomley and Lash sit down. As Bickford gets one. As Brown's going to take a seat. He might have twisted that ankle. That's a bad ankle he had early in the season. And we're going to have a timeout. 444 left to go here. 69-40, you see it right there, folks, as the Panthers have really put the pressure on here from really the end of that first quarter as they've been on a roll offensively. If you coach Patsy, you've got to be happy with your defensive game. Certainly happy the way you shot, shot the basketball. Sorry, I was just doing some math. I thought I was off by a point. So it'll be Belfast basketball. They got to go to the length of the floor here. Donlin on patient. 
And it's thrown away. And pant the ball, Bickmore with the drive. Stops, doesn't go. And ripped away by Belfast. They're going the other way, patient. Oh, he got a oh, travel. There were no, no question. A little bit of a star uh, set He there. was halfway back to Belfast on that one. <laughs> on foot. <laughs> it's going to be a long, cold journey. Lash back in the ball game now. Young freshman. Who has played very well in the varsity game. DDS. And the JV. Bickmore to Lash. Bickmore trying to turn the corner, he can't do it, he gets hammered. And I believe, oh no, that might just be his fourth. Oh, no, that was not a foul on who I thought it was. Never mind. Next foul's on Keegan. <laughs> Megawa, Meg Meg McGowan. McGowan, I'm sorry. As Jake gets the first, he's gonna have another, he's got them both. Wondering if they practiced free throw shooting recently. They're doing pretty well from the line. McGowan, back to Payson. And they're going to have Bickmore with a body block. I believe that is his first. So it's 24, James Ritter will be at the line. Nope. They're not. They're going to take it out of bounds on a one and one call instead. Not a shooting foul. <laughs> not quite in the bonus yet. And kicked away by Corey Donlin. That one down low. Gowan nails a three. Belfast is going to come up with five new guys. Bickmore with a drive and he gets it knocked away. 71 43, 255, fourth quarter. Wholesale substitutions. Oh, I'm going to need a minute here. As the Panthers come out with some subs of their own. I don't have number 25 on my roster. He was number 12. Uh, I'm not even sure I say his name. Vishal Mella. He's a spunky little player. He's a freshman, I think. Uh, started on that JV, started on the freshman team, started on the JV team. And he's in the ball game. I think this may be his first Vashi action this year. And I'm getting some thumbs up from some, some moms in the stands. <laughs> He's a scorer. He, he hit a couple of threes in that JV game and ran the floor very well. So we're going to try to run this last three minutes down here. 255, 71 43. Panthers in control. Over the Belfast Lions as the Panthers looking to go four and three on the season. And it's going to be that ball out of bounds. Lash will put the ball in play. Lash, over the ball. Camella. Hutchins down to Lash. Nice! Nice entry pass by Hutchins. Ah, Donlin. 
That wasn't a smart one, Corey. He knows it. Coach DePatsy on the sidelines. Think, think, think. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be in the one and one. From here out. As both teams in the bonus situation. Donlin, back to Mella. Donlin has Flash. Oh, Hutchins missed it. Bunny. Got a couple of JV players in there. Who's out there? White, white ball. Garrett Hutchins will put the ball in play to young Mr. Mella. Mella puts up a three, doesn't go. He wanted that one. So did the crowd. <laughs> I think that may be his mom that's sitting down in front of us. Who threw it up? <laughs> Number five, Wesley Dyer. That was what you call a prayer. And the answered one, too. Yeah. Bella. <laughs> Donlin with a three, doesn't go. Hutchins with the rebound, the lash. Oh, nicely done. Gotta love that. Gate could have easily had that hoop, dished it off. The for a little bit Holgerson. For a little bit better, better look. If you coach the pass, you gotta be happy with this. Mella, he's gonna go over the line, he's gonna get hammered. But he's going to get a chance to go to the foul line. But maybe his two first fast points. And the varsity boys are psyched. Pressure's on the young freshman. Yeah. He's Handled got it. it. Like a pro. <laughs> when that rattled around, they could drop through. <laughs> the second one would be easier. He's perfect in his vasty career from the foul line. That's a stat you carry with you. Yeah, it is. Seventy-seven forty-five. Panthers in control. Just under a minute left to go here. And they're going to travel on Belfast. So Madonna can put the ball in play. Thank you. Hutchins looking back to Mella. Flash, Donlin with a three. Doesn't go. Flash rebound. Kicks it out to Mella. Mella with a three. And it does not go. Rebound, Lash. He'd like to see this, this one go. And that's going to wrap it up for the Panther Dome. We're going to hear the buzzer as the Panthers rattle off a 77 45. Very impressive offensive performance tonight by the Panthers. And Maya, you're going to have some scores? I'm going to need you to throw it to sponsors so I can do some math. There's a lot to add up here. All righty, we're going to. Bangor Savings Bank where you matter more. Midcoast Athletic Center, Route 1, Warren. RZR Ace Hardware, Route 1 in Warren. Ace is the place. Shelley's Flowers, 
Beautiful flowers, exceptional service, and daily deliveries. Lincoln's Country Store. Shop Lincoln's. It only makes sense. Madomic Veterinary Services. Professional, compassionate care. Maple Lane Builders. For renovations, additions, or new construction. First National Bank of Damariscotta. We believe in you. France Furniture, Route 90 in Warren. All right, we're back here at the Panther Dome. The Panthers rattle off a very impressive win. Shot the three ball exceptionally well. Maya, how are we doing for the score? You know what? We're going to go with it. All right, let All it rip it, girl. Over for Belvest, Wesley Dyer with two, uh, Andrew Abalon with six. James Ritter with eight, KJ Payson with 13, and Keegan McGowan with 16. For the Panthers, we have a large amount of scorers. We have Bischel Mailer with two. We have Corey Donlin with two. We have Ben Bomley with two. We have Garrett Hutchins with three. Gabe Lash with four. Uh, we have Jacob Craig with three, excuse me. Jake Bickmore with 15, Patrick McKinney with 21, and Trevor Brown with 23 points. Pretty balanced score in there from the Panthers. Everybody got in the ball game tonight. So, folks, we invite you to come on back tomorrow afternoon and watch the Madonic Middle School play. Thursday night we'll have the Lincoln Academy Eagles in town at the Panther Dome to, as they try their luck against this high-flying Panther offense. And on Saturday afternoon we'll have the Madonic Valley Girls taking on the Mount Arid Eagles. And my uh, friend, Maya Zewart, Larry Seidlinger for LCTV, we thank you for watching, and don't forget to say thank you to our sponsors, and we'll see you next time. This has been a production of LCTV Sports. Thank you to all our sponsors and fans. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's game.